Life Cycle 101. This is part 7 and we're going to talk about page breaks today. So we're going to start where we ended last time which is we have this form letter sample or an invoice and in this invoice we've allowed the table to grow and expand but we've not allowed it to grow past one page. And what I want to do is I want to show you what happens when it grows past one page and talk about page breaks talk about repeating headers and footers of tables and then repeating headers and footers of master pages and give you a kind of an overview of what master pages do. So in order to do that we need to highlight our row object and go to the binding tab under the object tab and we need to turn off. We had this set to 11 before. We need to go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to set the initial count here 11 and we're going to save that form and I'm going to open it up in Acrobat Pro now to do the preview because it'll show us better page by page and we can turn on this sidebar that shows us multiple pages. So right now we have one page go down on resolution a little bit. We have 11 rows we have our header, our client address, our table with 11 rows, our sincerely, our signature field, and our endorsement. And so now as this grows past 12 rows you start to see what happens. Things start disappearing off the bottom of this page and moving on to this the second page. So it's growing and it's doing what's called a page break. And we can also see what happens when we get the table so big that it page breaks. So now we have on page two this, the table again. And so notice a few interesting features and this is by default right now. Our table is set to add all these rows and no matter what we put in here it's going to keep adding three hundred sixty one dollars but in the, on page two we also see three hundred sixty one dollars so that footer row is on both the first page and the last page no matter how many rows we add or how many rows we subtract now I subtracted the values so I have to put those back in so if we keep adding rows the header for the table is here but it's also here on the second page but now the header of the whole document, this header up here, this subform called subform header, does not go to the second page. All right, and then the things below the table push down, and we can continue to grow that as long as we keep clicking that button, and as long as we have no maximum amount of rows we want. And so what's going on here, I want to show you in the details of the table object. If we look at the header row itself, we have a binding tab here and a pagination tab. Now pagination can be pretty complicated in Adobe Lifecycle and I don't want to get into all of it yet. Just for the header row and the footer row I want to talk about these two check boxes here. Include header row in initial page, include header row in subsequent pages. And so what that's talking about is when we have this form and it, the table starts to grow and grow and go past one page, we have this header on the initial page, that's page one, and then also we have it at the top of subsequent pages same thing for the footer. We have the footer on the initial page and we have the footer on subsequent pages. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you would like to see the footer only on the last page, not to confuse somebody. And so in order to do that you need to highlight the footer row and then uncheck this um, include footer row in subsequent pages. And then let's save. Let's reopen. And now let's grow it past one page. And now at the bottom of this form we don't have the footer row. Only at the very bottom of the form itself here does the footer row happen. But we have the header row. And of course if we wanted to take that away from subsequent pages we could uncheck that box right there. But I assume you can do that on your own and figure that out. So that's a little bit about page breaks. As the page breaks, and what does a page break mean? Let me just define it for you. A page break is nothing more than the objects inside of this main design page object growing too big to fit inside of this content area we defined on our generic pretty much nothing master page. So remember the master page from the second or third part in this series. We only defined it very very um, rudimentary as this content container object that 
the main page objects will dwell inside. So in other words, the main page objects can't go outside of this predefined purple border we see here. If we want them to, we have to go back to this content area and we've got to change the size here. And when we do that, then things can move. They have to live inside that content area. Okay, so now that brings us to the whole topic of uh, master pages. What is a master page? Basically a master page is a template of a page or it's a template of a design object. And I call these design pages or design objects because that's the name of this tab, design view. I don't know exactly what they would call it in the, in the Adobe help books and help screen. Probably a subform or a, a, a secondary subform. All right, I don't like those names. I want to call this a design object. And what many people do, many people make the mistake of saying, oh, my main page has all this content on it. It has everything from subform header to txt endorse. And if I want a second page, I need to add a design object. I need to add a new page and call this page two. And then I need to start adding things to this, like a header and a footer. And I need to start programming things on this page. And they do that not realizing that there's no need on a float form to create a second design page object unless you want to change something that's happening outside the boundaries of the purple here, outside the content area. There's really no need for a page two in this example because all page two does is force a page break. So if we were to save this, let's just uh, clean this up a little bit and we'll copy and paste the table row object here just for an example and then we'll make this float and set our order intuitively alright let's just save that and open it up here and see what happens so we have two design objects we have two design page objects and so immediately we get two pages like this. But what happens when this one grows? It kicks this page down and creates this white space here between it because we've defined this whole design object right here called main and all the things contained by it and then we've designed this separate page too and all the things it contains and that creates a whole separate group of objects and so in, in the current example we don't need that and I get a lot of people who don't understand form flow who build everything in their main page and then they get to the they get to the bottom here on the the design view and they say oh so for example they do something like this they come in here and they add a bunch of bunch of these thinking oh I need 11 rows or I need 12 rows and they make it big enough for one page They say, okay, that fits on one page. And they add, let's say they say, well, I need one more row. And they see that that, that bottom object drops off. They say, oh, okay, I don't have room for this now. Therefore, what I need to do is I need to take that TXT endorse and I need to put that on a second design object. I need to put that on a second design page like this. Not realizing that when the object grow and shrink, this is going to create a whole separate page. And so they do something like this and it creates a form that's just unworkable so this design, I'm gonna, I need to whittle this down so you can see it so now we have this whole separate page here with with endorse here and then we have this growing table and what they were expecting to have was something like this but once this starts growing it pushes that, it breaks this to a third page and it just looks terrible and it's not right because again these people that do this and, and they're beginners, I don't hold it against them, but they just don't understand how these objects work and what form flow really is. So in any form that's flowed you normally don't need a second design page like this. Everything should flow and the pages should break and there's no need to, pr to plan for a second set of pages. 
I hope that's clear. That's very difficult to explain and very difficult to understand at first. Okay, so we're going to talk about master pages now in a, in a quick introduction. Let's say in this example we want this logo and this address to appear on any subsequent pages that this table grows into. Uh, right now it's not it's not working that way. Right now this only exists on the very top of our main page and if the pages break it doesn't reappear. Let's say we want that to happen though. The way to make that happen would be to put this on the master page then. Like so. Let me drag it up here. Okay, now when I once I do that, I have to make some adjustments to my master page. Right now my content area encompasses everything you see in purple. But I don't want subform header to have any data superimposed over it like this. I don't want that. I want subform header to exist on its own at the top and then everything else to exist below it. But my content area right now encompasses all that area. So I need to take back that real estate by doing this. By moving that down and then moving subform header outside of the content area. So now my content area is just that, body one, and subform header is above that. And so there's no overlap. And now when I go back to design view, ah, here we go. I've got this unreachable part of the form at the top here that nothing's allowed to go up under. And now the form can grow. And this, every time main page breaks into multiple pages, this top part, this subform header, will be there. So let's demonstrate. Alright, there it is. Looks just like it looked before. We'll turn on our preview here. And now let's make it grow. And now it broke to second page. And now let's look at the second page. There's the top part. So the master page functions like a template. It's basically a watermark or a, a, a background of everything else that's going to happen no matter how big our form grows. And we just have to make sure that nothing overlaps a content area if we don't want to see that overlapping in our design view. And so here's some, some things you can do with master pages that are helpful. You can put like at the bottom a page counter object. And so if you look here in the object library, there's a standard and then there's a custom. Inside the custom there's a very helpful page in of m object. If you drag that onto your form and put it below the content area, down here, let's say, let's center it. So let's go to the very middle. We'll go to layout, center and page horizontally. Okay, now that's centered. And now let's preview the form. Now at the bottom of the page, we have this page one of one. And when it grows into two pages, now it becomes automatically page one of two. And at the bottom of page two, page two of two. So that's the kind of thing you can do with a master page. You can create objects that do not move, that do not flow, but then don't also crowd out things that are flowing and are moving. That's the real that's the real crux, that's the real power of a master page. And so leverage that in your forms. Many times people who want a form with logos at the top or addresses at the top use the master page to do it. And of course what I've done here is I've made this really big. It doesn't have to be this big. We can make this a lot smaller so that it fits a lot better and doesn't take up so much room. We could do something like this and then make our content area go all the way and recover that real estate I call it. And Then we go back to design view and then it's, it's tiny and that's at the bottom. Or sometimes people do this on their master page. They put page one of one on the far right like this and then they put something like a form title and a version number down here in the left corner. So they put like, uh, we'll call this form letter revision 918. Something like that. Make that really tiny text. And put that over in the corner like that. So then that lives down there at the bottom, kind of like page one of one lives.
So a lot of things, very versatile. You can do a lot of things with this, but the basics are the master page and the content area is a is a is a defined area where your design page can live. And so you don't want any of this purple to overlap anything on the master page. You want you could butt up against it, but you don't want it to overlap so that then when you're making your content on design view, things will flow, will page break, and will look professional when you're done. Okay, join us for part eight coming up tomorrow. Uh, I think I'll be talking more about master pages, more about page breaks, and this mysterious thing here called the pagination tab. So we'll see you next time.